Hi all. Welcome to episode 13 of the Nigerian Mindset. Your weekly social awareness, motivational and educational program on YouTube. I'm Dr. Nana Aisha Akeze. Today, I will continue our discussion on small business sustainability relative to Nigerian society. I'll be talking about how we can, you know, sustain our small businesses in Nigeria. First, here are my views. Social responsibility is an ethical framework which suggests that an entity, be it an organization or individual, has an obligation to act for the benefit of the society in general, meaning that an individual or organization can act towards the benefit of the communities without counting the cost. That is corporate social responsibility. Where is the situation where an organization we have a policy or a system in place that have the interest of the community in mind. So they set aside a budget to be helping them on a yearly basis or monthly or thereabout. An organization that is doing that is socially actually you know responsible to the community or state or nation that they operate. Although corporate social responsibility may not completely solve the community or societal problems. Nevertheless, it provides ways for companies to benefit themselves while also benefiting the society. Having a social responsibility policy by any company at all can influence the buying decision of customers in a community or the society. And there are four types of corporate social responsibility. They include environmental sustainability initiative, direct philanthropic giving, financial business practices, and economic responsibility. So here, let's take a break. Let's just take a break for a moment. You know in Nigeria, people, before anything, you hear that, oh, she's a philanthropist, or he is a philanthropist. <laughs> because in Nigeria, we like titles a lot, but not the action that actually comes with that title. Listen, for someone to be called a philanthropist, that person needs to have a love humanity, have initiative, and should be able to give large donation to causes they care for, like providing electricity or communities to the communities all over the country. You know, something really big and significant, or doing something big, and it's a continuous thing should be able to do something really significant and large with a continuous interest and that that kind of person those are the people who are philanthropists it's not just okay to call someone a philanthropist because he or she is presumed a rich person and can give one a cara here or one small my mind that person is not a philanthropist so we need to be using the words rightly. The person needs to dedicate part of their work to help others. There are so many people like that here in the U.S. And I encourage Nigerians who are able to look into that. We can move forward in Nigeria once we have the mindset to give back to our communities because we have so many rich people in Nigeria. Philanthropic giving is an effort of an individual or organization with desire to improve human welfare. It's not something you do once. It's a continuous effort. 
we love to help others, to help the society, to donate to good causes, is what makes you a philanthropist. Therefore, it is important that businesses in Nigeria that are not participating in giving back to the community start looking into corporate social responsibility. It is important that in Nigeria, every company should demonstrate social responsibility action. In my view, it is no longer okay for companies to operate without benefiting our society in Nigeria, given the situation in Nigeria right now. It's not okay for them to continue to source for businesses only without benefiting the communities. We need all hands on deck. In my past episodes, I gave examples of how gas stations here in America give back to their communities, no matter how little. The fact that I can drive into a gas station in my community, or even in many states, I just noticed that in many states here in the US, they actually don't do that. To give back to their communities, no matter how little, is significant. Although, corporate social responsibility is not a legal requirement. There's no law requiring that organizations must participate in corporate social responsibility. It's, there's no legal requirement to that. But, it is a good practice for any business to take social and environmental responsibilities into account in the community or society they operate. When you go to the mall here in the U.S., for people who live in the U.S., or maybe it happens in Europe too, if you go to the mall, trust me, if you are hungry and you want to eat something for free, there's always things to eat. For people who are frying something or the other, you will see things they put there. You can eat here and eat there, drink here and drink there. You know, so those are some of the ways that, you know, businesses impact people around. Those are just even small, small businesses. Social responsibility and ethical practices are vital to the success of any business. Research revealed that 91%, yes, you heard me right, 91% of customers globally expect businesses to address social and environmental concerns. Yes, that's consumers. Expecting even though social responsibility, it's not legal binding by any law for companies to do that. But consumers expect that companies address those concerns. That means it's not only government that is responsible to do things for the communities or for the society, you know. Also, 84% of customers confirm that they only buy products from companies who are socially responsible. Can you, can you believe that? Yes, that is the reason those countries are advanced because the consumers they don't just buy things, they know what they are doing. They do their research before they, bu they buy things. They want to buy from companies who are actually benefiting the communities or the society. Consumers from advanced countries look into that before making their you know, purchasing decisions. That is where we as Nigerians need to you know, start looking towards. We need to start looking at that. And the reason I'm revealing it here in this episode, we need to start looking at companies in Nigeria and what is it that they are doing for us? What is it that they are doing for the communities? For you to make your buying decision, you just don't go and be buying things just like that. We need to be aware of what is happening. We cannot just be cool with same old, same old. We need to move forward. We need to be aware of what is happening. We cannot just do or buy things the way we have always bought things. We can't be cool with that. We need to look at things that matter to our communities. Trust me, I do that here in the US. Yes, many people do it. 
I always do my research before I start to buy things. I agree with these studies because I will always purchase my gas from the gas station that I see contributing to the communities. I ensure that my tank is always fed from my local gas station, which I have determined that is contributing to my community. Fellow Nigerians, it is time for us to start asking businesses in Nigeria to wake up and start contributing to our society. Businesses cannot all, it's not okay. They cannot all be looking to make profits and not think about how they will benefit the community where they operate. I encourage Nigerians to start making purchase decisions that are based on social contributions by businesses. We need to start patronizing businesses that cares about our communities in Nigeria. According to the study I just mentioned earlier, consumers worldwide are increasingly aware of the importance of social responsibility. They seek products from businesses that operate ethically. So we need to do that in Nigeria. Businesses, particularly corporate organizations, should no longer be able to take Nigerians for, for granted. Not anymore. We need to start demanding for actions. Not through fighting, though. I'm not asking you to fight. It's through community organizing. We need to start to have community organizing, then you know, have a leader who will go and be discussing with the businesses of what is it that they are doing for the society, for the communities they are operating. We need to start demanding that from the businesses. When I order something here, even online, <laughs> those businesses that goes out of their way to add a little bit of something for to what I order, you know, tells me a lot about them. Even if whatever they are adding does not make anything to me, but it tells me their mindset. It's not just about making profits. It's about satisfying that customer or giving back in their own way. So corporate social responsibility does not only benefit the society or community. It has huge benefit to businesses. So why are Nigerian business leaders ignoring it? In my view, that is because Nigerians do not ask questions. They do not ask questions. They just buy things. You know, they just continue to struggle. Nigerians seems not to pay attention about how they are treated. Where well, time is up for that. Businesses need to benefit the society and vice versa. It's not about just opening your business to make profit. You need to also benefit the society that you are, you are operating. Given the Nigerian situation, corporations like Coca-Cola, Everwater, Guinness and others should be able to provide electricity to the communities where their production is situated such as Ibadan and Benin, Coca-Cola should be able to provide electricity for the communities. It's not okay for only their plant to have electricity. They can work with the government. They provide electricity because they have been in Nigeria for, for many, many decades. Not only to secure their production environment and leave the community in darkness, that is not okay. It's not okay. These corporations need to work with the authorities and provide electricity to the communities where their production facility is. To you, corporate leaders, listen to this. Benefit of corporate social responsibility include improved business public image, word of our mouth, increased brand awareness and recognition, Cost savings. You have advantage over competitors. If you are giving back to your community, people will start to talk about you. Talk about the businesses. Then you don't need much of advertisements. Because people will advertise for you by through the word of, of the mouth. When you give back to the community business leaders, you operate you are actually helping your business. 
you will stand out from competitors. In your industry, you will establish yourself as a company committed to going one step further for social and environmental impartation. The customer will love and follow this good gesture to engage with your brand. You need to start doing that. Business leaders in Nigeria, this is what you need to do. You have to start giving back to the community where you are operating. It's not okay that you have a big factory for so many years and there's no electricity in that community. You can provide them electricity. Here in the United States, a well-known franchise called McDonald's, we have similar, you know, businesses like that in Nigeria. Mr. Biggs. So here, the McDonald has a policy. They are not only giving out; to, they have a policy that is committed to social responsibility. This business, Charity Foundation, known as Ronald McDonald House Charity, has awarded more than one hundred million dollars in funded in funding and this effort through the foundation and that's what i'm telling you have a foundation have a, a foundation attached to your business they give out global grants the aim of the charity is to focus on impacting children's heads they help children all over the world not only just in america nigerian business and corporate leaders what are you doing to impact our society what are you doing to impact nigerian society must we now all continue with this attitude of grab whether it's business we will grab 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 and not give back to the society who are you pushing all this responsibility to nigerian corporate leaders who are you pushing the responsibility to? The government is already overwhelmed and you know it. Overstressed and you know it. We need to do our part. You are taking so much from the society. The least you can do is give back. Give a little back to the society for sustenance. Nigerian corporate leaders begin to look inward from today that being said last episode we expounded on how people should embrace their family's small businesses like i told you last episode if your father or your mother was into obioma business and was able to sponsor your first degree through that you should not be ashamed of it Should not be afraid or ashamed of the family small business or trade do not run away from it we also explain how you can fund startup initiatives or expand family trades by sourcing funds through microfinancing now what is microfinancing microfinancing is a financial service system that is available to low income earners or people without income to start a small business. In the case of Nigeria, this type of services can come from families, friends, neighbors, or organizations. Individuals who are interested in starting a small business can source their funds through this means. Don't tell me it's difficult, it's not. Because I told you, I give my nephews, my niece, even some friends, I give them money. So you can find a good friend, a good family, a good neighbor, who you can talk about your business. They will, you will be surprised that they will give you some money. In Nigeria, we have many families and friends who can be, who can be sources for microfinancing. Just give them your business ideas. You will be surprised that they will, they, they will support you. Nevertheless, for people who do not have such families, because it's not everybody who have good friends or good family, I understand, I get that. 
but you can still get some money let me tell you how to do it for people who do not have such families and friends who they can go to go to the bank don't worry about it go to the bank and seek for advice asking about microfinance for their business the banks they are organizations small small organizations that they work with I believe they have it in Nigeria because they are here in the US go to the bank in Nigeria ask them don't ask for a loan because you know you don't have collateral but tell them that you want to start a business and they will they may introduce you to microfinance institution yes the best and sure source of funding for small business for give for beginners cannot provide who cannot have pro, uh, you know collateral for banks loans is through microfinance your bank will be able to do that for you microfinancing works it is it works convincing people close to you that your business ideas is viable and will become profitable is a sure and fastest way to raise capital for your startup initiatives so don't let that idea die in you go ahead and source for that finance and you will find it that said in this episode i shall take a brief look into how small businesses stay profitable by gaining new customers remember i told you last week how you can start up and this week a little bit of how you can get those money but this episode I shall take a brief look into how small businesses stay profitable by gaining new customers and retaining existing ones. As we all know, customers are the lifeline and center of all businesses. Business is about making profits. If a business is not profitable, then why are we in business? Yes, why are we in business in the first place? First, <laughs> many Nigerians may have seen some small business owners disregard or disrespect customers in one form or the other. Many owners immediately put up the attitude of a boss as soon as you, you want to patronize them. They will start doing big money. <laughs> business owners in nigeria listen for you to be successful in business or in anything in life you must put aside that big manism that big manism attitude that we have in nigeria you need to put it aside if you want your business to succeed you need to put that big manism aside when you are in your business place treat all customers right any customer that comes in treat that person right whether it's a small, a big, a medium, whoever, as if they are the lifeline of your business sustenance. Because they are. Because if you don't have customers, what are you doing in business? The business is gone. Your employees. It's so tiring. Sometimes, one time I really wanted to do something in Nigeria. I went online. There's really no much to search. And I saw some companies I called. And the way the, 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 the reception is with evil and silent, you will be so like amazed and very tired. Like, what is going on? You need to train your employees. If you have any, you must have the best training for customer service. Remember that employees are the most valuable asset and greatest asset to any successful business. So don't treat your employees anyhow. People power is the most significant of all assets of a business. Profitability. If I pick up a phone and call an organization, even here in the US, and the person did not give me a good response. I would say, you know what, okay, I'll drop, I'll call another person because they are multiple. So your employees must be trained to be able to answer good phone calls. Customer satisfaction influences loyalty. Customer satisfaction leads to customer retention. 
when I'm satisfied, then you can be sure that I'll be coming back to you. And customer retention leads to business profitability. Research revealed that businesses make more profit from repeat customers than they do from new customers. Some business owners in Nigeria immediately kick into attitude. Once you are in their business to them, why? Why would they do that? Why are they trying to, what, what is it that they are trying to prove? And how can they sustain their businesses? A critical example in Nigeria are some health professionals, doctors, nurses, and others who immediately see patients are subject to be loaded over, and that is strong. Someone who recently returned from Nigeria told us a tale of a near-death experience in the hand of a private medical professional just for a stomach upset from food poisoning. They got to the gate and had all these protocols and all of that. When they tried to get him to do something, the doctor, he reluctantly told them to go back to the desk, feed out form for somebody who is almost dying. And this person came from the U.S. How can we sustain our businesses like this? How? We need to be professional and take our work seriously. We need dignity and respect for our customers and clients. We need to respect them. Another pregnant woman who discovered that her fetus was not, you know, moving and went to the hospital. Do you know that the hospital sent her back? Even though they confirmed that the baby was no longer, you know, alive. They did not immediately do what they are supposed to do. They send her back home. Why are we doing this in Nigeria? How can we, you know, have this kind of business practices in Nigeria? Keep your business. Keep your business environment clean. Paint and repaint annually. These are some of the ways that you can sustain and maintain your business. Not have a tattered business environment anything goes as much as possible have and maintain a full script write a script you need to write a script for for your receptionist on how to answer calls not hello how can i help you no you need to write a full script for all your receptionists all your customer service people they must have its phone script that it gets used to. Nigerian business owners. This should be your typical business practice for success. Businesses cannot survive for too long without good customer service. So customer service is the first center and the last for a business to survive. When your business is no longer being patronized because of your attitude, when you have bad attitude, when your, your, your employees have bad, bad attitude, some business owner, what else do you expect? Prayers. They result to endless prayers. Prayers are good. When you actually you are doing something good, all you need to do is to pray to you know improve on your business. Not when your attitude is so bad, then you start moving from mountain to valley, valley to mountain. This is ludicrous. It doesn't work like that. You need to have customer service for your business to be patronized. Nigerian business owners, the way to keep and sustain your business involves having good customer services. That's number one. You must have good customer services. Our people say, what you are looking for in Sokoto is in your Shokoto. So you don't need to be going from mountain to valley, pillar to post. You need good customer services. You need good attitude. You need a clean business environment. 
to sustain your business. The truth is that when you treat customers poorly in your business, do not expect them to come back. Don't expect them to come back. Fellow Nigerians, the tip to grow your business is, is first class, first class customer service approach. Customers are the live wires to any business. How you treat your customers ensures that you continue to get patronage and remain in business. The best way to promote and sell your business is through the word of our mouths. Improved patronage is predicated upon good customer service and customer satisfaction. You see, Walmart and Target gives, you know, Walmart and Target, both of those businesses have good mission statement. Target to customers. For Walmart, their mission is to save money so you can live better. That's their mission statement. And for Target, their mission statement includes to make the organization customers preferred shopping destination by delivering outstanding value i tend to go with that of target i shop at both places but i go more to target because when you go to target the customer service and everything satisfied you know the satisfaction i get from target is good for me walmart is okay too but even though you get things cheaper in walmart than target but the customer satisfaction in, in Walmart is not there. When you're looking for something, first their stores are not really well organized, except recently they're actually organizing their stores. When you ask for it, something, they say, oh, go there, it's right there, it's right here. But if it's Target, they will follow you there, show you, stay with you. You know, those are the things that you should improve on when you are doing businesses. Note, you may spend millions on advertising, marketing and promotion and even make your products and services the cheapest around without good customer service relationship and satisfaction will not be there for your customers business will not thrive we shall continue with our discussion on small business practices with emphasis on how to start and maintain our businesses next week fellow nigerians what will be your legacy? Do you want to be remembered for how much money you were able to acquire? <laughs> or how were you touch lives in our society and change things to benefit Nigerian citizens? The choice is yours. Let your legacy reflect good deeds thank you for joining me on the program today please join me next week for continuation of our discussion on this series and issues in nigeria with tips and, and possible solution my website is standingbyyourdream.com as always check out some of our peer-reviewed article titled basic life skills required by girl children to overcome adversities of polygamy in Isako, Nigeria. Check it out at ResearchGate website. For so many of our articles, you can find them there at ResearchGate website. And some of our books are here, like I always share with you. You can find them on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Google, all over the world. These are very informational, you know, you get a lot of information here. They are all, some of them are research book, like this is a research book and it can actually teach you what to do in your business. And this is Growing Up African Girl Child in Itako. A lifelong lesson here, you can, you know, read it and learn a lot of lessons that no one can stop you but you. No one will be able to stop you but you. We have so many other books here, like I've always shared with you. Thank you for joining me today on Nigerian Mindset. 
I see you next week. Bye bye.